Hi again, this uh, video is again a tutorial on using the graphics calculator. Um, we're trying to find the area bounded by two curves this time. So the previous video was looking at the area bounded by a curve and the x-axis. Um, this one's just looking at potential curves. Okay, so again it's tech active. We want to know how to use the graphics calculator to, to do this. And we've got these curves and no indication what they might look like. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually plot them. I've already um, placed these into my graphics calculator. Um, I'm going and I've selected a window. I'm going to graph these now. As you can see, that's all done. Uh, the blue curve is this one here, which is a cubic. You can see the effect of the X. And this bracket has an X, but it's squared. So the X by an X squared term will give me that blue cubic. And I've got a linear expression there, two power functions. So what I want to do is find the area between this uh, in this section and this section. Again, I can label them A1 and A2. And it might be an idea because we want to convey this information and justify it in and a potential exam. We can just say using GC, the curves were sketched. And important to this is not just sketching the curves, but finding the point of intersection. So for instance, I want to know uh, where initially this red line meets the blue line firstly, then in the middle, and then finally at the end, because these will constitute bounds for our integrations. So we'll do those things together. So using uh, the GC, the curves were sketched as shown, and the points of intersection. determined. So sketching those. And then with a bit of creative license there I've called 1Y1 and 1Y2 so that we've got those things sketched relatively quickly. Now this will become area one, and this will become area two. And just a reminder, because we've got this one above our straight line curve, um, it's going to be positive, and this one may well be a negative because it falls below it, uh, similar to the x-axis things we've seen previously. So importantly, we need to actually find those points of intersection because they'll be the bounds, and we'll have to calculate these areas separately. So going to the graphics calculator, second trace menu i want to actually find where these things intersect so option five and i'm asked to just nominate the first curve so it already comes up with the blue section there uh, indicating it's on the blue curve i press enter and then it says is this the second curve and again i press enter now you might think why why is it prompting us for first and second curves well often we might have three or four curves actually um, on our graphics calculator and we just have to nominate which two we're interested in this one's a bit easier we only have the two so here we've got those two so we'll get it to guess and it shows us the intersection is at one so here um, oh sorry negative one our x intersects whoops And then we will repeat the process, finding the others, just taking your cursor closer to the point where they do intersect. And you can see that's point two, and then repeating for their third and final point. And again, just repositioning your cursor closer. Enter for that, enter for the second, and enter for the third. And there's your third one at x equals three. So rather lucky values there. So that's 3, 1 and negative 1. So now these are going to be the bounds and I will say area 1 can be found by an integral of the first function minus the second function dx. Uh, my apologies, last video I forgot to put the dx in. Now we want that initially between negative 1 and 1. This is the point where these intersect. And that should give us this area. Um, so I will go back through and I will use my math function in this instance. So just quitting there, go to math and option 9. And I want negative 1 
through to one. Let me just see if I've got that right. Yeah, position that so we can see. And then my functions are And just double checking, so x plus 1, x minus 2, or squared minus x plus 1. You want that with respect to x. And I've got the bounds correct, so if I press enter there, you can see my area is 4 square units. And as predicted, we've got a positive value there of 4. And that's because I've actually taken the upper curve and I've subtracted the lower curve from it. So now I'm going to repeat this, and again, think about the shortcuts you can use. So I want pretty much the same equation, but this time my bounds are going to change. So I'll just go up and copy that. And this time my bounds will be, let's see if I can delete that without deleting the whole thing. My bounds will be from 1 here through to 3 there. And then you can see that the area is the same, but this time, um, oops, area 2 equals the same thing, this time from 1 to 3. And that's going to equal 4 square units as well. So I'm ignoring convenient the fact that it's negative. I knew it was going to be negative because this time what was my lower curve is now on the top and what was my upper curve is on the bottom so I can expect that positive would have um, changed to a negative sign. What I didn't know was that it was going to be 4 as well, 4 units. And finally I've got to determine the total area there so therefore total area equals 4 plus 4 or 8 units squared. Okay, remembering that if you ask for an area, we need to give it some units. If the units are not actually articulated in the problem of the question, just call it units squared. Otherwise, it might be metres or centimetres. Okay, I hope that's helpful.